All right, here we're describing what an object does in these different cases. We need to say whether the path is straight or curved and whether the speed is increasing, decreasing, or remaining the same. So if we have no tangential, all right, for a uh, first quick reminder, tangential acceleration changes speed. Meanwhile, oh, that's not how you spell speed. Meanwhile, centripetal acceleration changes direction. All right, so if an object has no tangential acceleration and no centripetal acceleration, there's a constant speed. Uh, and a straight line. If an object has tangential, that is in tangential acceleration that's in the same direction as velocity and no centripetal acceleration, that means we're speeding up and straight line again because there is no change of direction. If an object has tangential acceleration that's in the opposite direction as velocity and no centripetal acceleration, that means our speed is going down so we're slowing down, and again, we're moving in a straight line. If an object has no tangential but does have centripetal acceleration, we're going to have a constant velocity. And a curved path. If an object has tangential that's in the same direction as velocity and has centripetal acceleration, then we are speeding up, and we've got the curve. So we'll, we'll have a curved path. If the tangential acceleration is in the opposite direction, then again, speed is down, and there's a curved path. Each of the following dots represents a car driving forward in the driver's frame of reference. Each dot shows the velocity vector v and the net force vector f acting on the car as seen from above. State whether the car is speeding up, slowing down, or constant speed. And whether the car is turning left or right, or not turning. Alright, so remember that f um, divided by m equals a. And what this equation, Newton's second law, tells us is that A and F are directly proportional. So wherever you see an F, if you think about it as being acceleration, just remember that this could be net and this would be net, uh, then that's okay. So in this first diagram, we have an F pointed to the left and we have a V going this way. So can you imagine if we drew our circle. Now we have a tangential velocity and an f pointed towards the middle. So we have a centripetal force going in that direction. So we have centripetal acceleration. So our motion is going to look like this with a constant velocity. Well, constant speed anyway. Definitely not a constant velocity because our direction is changing. Constant speed. Uh, in this one, Velocity is in the opposite direction as force, which means velocity is in the opposite direction of acceleration. So we're s our speed is going down. We're slowing down. And straight line. We're moving in a straight line. There is no direction happening. For this one, we have acceleration upward and velocity this way. This one is a little bit more tricky. So velocity and force, they're not exactly parallel to each other and not exactly perpendicular to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the force vector into a parallel component and a perpendicular component. When I do that, that tells me, okay, so that means I have a piece that is tangential acceleration and a centripetal acceleration. So what's going to end up happening is my motion is going to be in this direction 
because my uh, parallel is in the opposite direction, my speed is going down, and I'm turning in this direction anti-clockwise. Same thing for velocity. We have a tangential force and we have a centripetal force acting. So those two are going to, we have the tangential force is in the same direction. So we're speeding up in this one and our centripetal is pointed leftwards. So that means we're going to be curving like that. Again, counterclockwise.